Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, this is going to be my unofficial favorites for the month video. I'm gonna be honest, as you know, I did do a long distance move. So I pretty much stopped wearing makeup from February 18th up until now that I have my whole collection set up again. So it didn't feel right for me to do an official favorites video because I didn't I didn't wear that much makeup. But I did just want to play with the products that I've really been enjoying the last month. I did wear some makeup in between for a few days during the move, but not really. And I wasn't even really testing the products. I wasn't paying attention. I was just trying to slap some makeup on and look a little better. But a lot has happened in the month. There's been a lot of makeup news like e.l.f. is adding prices, right? Adding a dollar onto most of their items. Makeup Revolution bought BH Cosmetics, Makeup Geeks Closing. So I think I'll talk about that today as well. Might mention some products I haven't been loving. Let's get into it. It's, it's a chatty one today. So for my face, I just have my sunscreen and primer on. I'm gonna give the Makeup Forever HD Skin another go. I think I wore this twice and then I moved and completely forgot about my thoughts on this. <laughs> I know I didn't love it. I definitely was not sold on this foundation, but truthfully, I did not really try a foundation that I loved this month. I did try the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation in February. I do really, really like this, but it's not my all-time favorite foundation. But I want to give the Makeup Forever another try because I definitely did not like it at first. So I'm going to try a less is more approach with this something a little bit thinner. But after this and concealer, we'll get into products that I am actually loving. <laughs> but I just, I don't have one that I'm loving. Though, yesterday I did try the Dinesa Myrick's Yummy Skin Situation. Absolutely loved it. Can't wait to put it on my face again. But I want to retest this makeup forever one more time before I move on from it. <laughs> Spread a little bit more with my fingers. I feel like you get so much more spread and coverage of the product when you spread it out with your finger. Also, I'm going to keep mentioning this until this situation gets fixed. There's an echo in my filming space. If the echo bothers you, just watch the video on 1.5 to 2 times speed. That kind of reduces the echo. We, meaning my husband and I, we put a rug down and that wasn't enough. So we have some things on the wall to help with the bounce. And we're going to add a second rug. We're just waiting for that to come in. So slowly adding until we can get this dang echo situation figured out. It's just our ceilings are kind of high and all of our furniture <laughs> is really hard. I'm filming in our living space and I'll do a whole video on our apartment. We kind of created an office corner for me in our living space. We don't have a couch or anything really soft like that right now. So there's so much bounce of my voice going around. I did my eyebrows first and I've just been reminded why I don't do my eyebrows first. I cannot the area around my eyebrows. <laughs> okay, a light layer of this looks very, very nice. And I didn't have a concealer that I love this month, so I'm just gonna pop on some of my favorite ABH concealer. I tried a couple concealers. I gave the Jaclyn Cosmetics concealer a lot of trials and tribulations this month. And yeah, I don't like it. And then Unfortunately, the KVD concealer just didn't work out for me as well. Did not like that, so definitely doesn't deserve to be in a favorites video. I'm also making an effort to use my one size setting powder this month to get my thoughts on it. So again, not in the favorites, but I'm currently putting it to test. I'm just going to pop a little bit in the T-zone area. And then this is the first favorite that I want to talk about today. This is an amazing product. It's not a new product, but it's new to me. This is the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzing Essence. When I tell you I have been loving this. Now the dropper, I feel like, doesn't really work at all. I have to just kind of scoop it onto the stick and then put it on the back of my hand. You know, it's an affordable product, so I'm not mad. So my favorite way to apply it is to spread it out on your hand and then put it on your sponge. So by doing this, this gets even coverage on your sponge. 
so that when you pop it down, there's not little uneven dots that you have to work out. This will work out the product before you even apply it on the face, just to give everything an even spread. When I tell you I've been using this bronzer non-stop for the last, I want to say three weeks, it's been the only bronzer that I've been using because it was one of the only ones that I packed, but I've absolutely loved it. The tone is stunning. It's more of a bronze because it has a lot of warmth to it, really not too much coolness, but ugh, it's so beautiful and natural. And I know a lot of you are into the cream situation. Highly recommend this. And then I wanted to talk about some blush palettes that I've been testing this month that have been absolutely stunning. So these are the Wayne Goss Weightless Veil Blush Palettes. This is Wayne Goss's newest product, though I did see he has something new coming out after this. And if you watched his reveal video on this and the two lipsticks that he also came out with, I was very, very blessed to have been able to be one of the models for that. So I got to demo the product on his video and I was really sad that I was in the process of moving because I couldn't really share too much. I couldn't talk about these. I just had other things going on. So I did want to talk about them in today's video. These are one of my favorite items from Wayne Goss that he's ever launched. So he launched two colors, Sweet Wildfire and then the lighter one is Desert Blossom. Now when I saw these both in person I got a little worried because I thought they looked quite similar but you can see side by side there is a difference in undertone both are absolutely stunning you can't go wrong with either I think for today I am gonna go for the sweet wildflower this also has a hint of extra neutralness to it but I do love his blush and highlight formulation you won't be disappointed if you pick them up and he does have colors that will also be quite beautiful on deeper complexions. Do you see how pretty this is? And it's so neutral, it's gonna go with every look. I was very happy. If I had the choice to demo one product from Wayne Goss's line, it would be his blush and highlight duos because they are so beautiful. So I was really excited when he reached out to me because it was these products. There also is two additional lipsticks, which are also really beautiful wearable colors, but this formula, is where it's at in my opinion. Then let's use the highlight now. A lot of really great blush products did come out once I put on this highlight. I'll show you some other ones that I've been loving. Again, this is an unofficial favorite. I honestly feel like I'm still testing a lot of these products out because I haven't had the opportunity to test them out enough to be able to fully recommend them to you guys. But tentatively, I'm also loving the M Cosmetics Heaven Glow blushes from their Masterpiece collection. Rococo, I've been loving a lot. I wore this yesterday with the Danessa Myricks products. It lasted forever on the cheek. And Baroque, while it looks pretty scary, this is a nice, pretty everyday blush lighter. So I like these because they have a lot of sheen to them. So you don't need to add a highlight if you don't want to for every day. This is really all you need. You can skip the highlight. I've been enjoying these as well. And then Kaleidos also came out with their mono blushes in their new collection. These also are a stunningly beautiful formulation. These though came out right before I moved so I haven't gotten to use these a ton. So again, a tentative favorite of mine as I continue to explore them. Colourpop also came out with some beautiful blushes for their Valentine's Day collection. Lots of gorgeous cheek products but in terms of what I traveled with, I brought these two with me from Wingoss and absolutely stunning. These are definitely a true true favorite. Look how beautiful these are on my cheeks. And there's something so special about his highlight formula where it really is quite flattering even if you have some texture. You see how smooth that looks? I will definitely be talking about these more in following videos, but I did at least want to show you one live demo first. Now I am going to film my monthly palette rankings. I am not going to talk too much about my favorite eyeshadow palettes. You're going to have to stick around and wait for my monthly palette rankings video if it's not already up. And if it is, you can head over to it now. But today I actually want to test one of the palettes again before I start actually ranking them. I already know what my number one and two are and what my least favorite is. This is one that's kind of floating in the middle. I just want to use it again because there's so many shades. So we're going to do that in today's video. This is the ColourPop 
rock candy palette and I love this color story. Is it a necessity in a collection? Probably not. You probably do already own these tones, but in terms of the colors that I like to wear, this is like a great everyday palette for me. So I wanted to try some more shades because I only did one look with it last month. So I want to do another one. Okay, we went really, really intense with this look, but I really have only played with the mauve colors. So I wanted to play with the super cool toned gray colors scents that would really challenge the palette and such good quality. If this is a palette that you're interested in and you like the color story, I can confirm that the quality is pretty good, typical ColourPop quality. You know, the mattes are a little bit powdery, so just be careful about that. Expect a little bit of fallout. But all things considered, great palette for the price. Really um, enjoying playing with it today. So while I'm doing this look, I wanted to talk about the makeup news that I haven't been able to talk about, haven't gotten the opportunity, and I certainly want you guys to weigh in on this. I'm gonna start off with this shade right here, I Dig You. So the first news piece that I saw recently was that Makeup Revolution actually ended up buying BH Cosmetics. I was following the BH Cosmetics story because selfishly, I just love their eyeshadow formula and I don't want that to change and I truly am worried that it's gonna change now that a different company owns them. You know, I'm sure Makeup Revolution is happy with their factories, but let me tell you, I'm not. I don't like Makeup Revolutions or the Revolution Beauty umbrella. I don't like Revolution Beauty really. I like some things that they come out with, don't get me wrong, and they can be really fun and creative, but most of the time, not all the time, but based on my experience, I haven't loved a lot of their formulas, particularly in the eyeshadow category, which is what I was worried about. I'm gonna deepen the inner and outer corner right here. So it could be one of two ways. Since they bought BH Cosmetics, they also have the rights to their formula and their factories. So I'm hoping that it stays the same or even Makeup Revolution might steal <laughs> BH's formula and use it within their own palettes, which would also be great because Makeup Revolution comes up with some really fun colors color stories. I think the company itself, it's gonna go a lot deeper than that. I don't even know that the higher-ups are probably worried about keeping the integrity of the BH Cosmetics eyeshadow formulas, but as a consumer, I really hope that that does not affect the formulation. I am happy though that BH did get somebody to take ownership of them because I like BH and it would be sad to see them go and hopefully Revolution will uphold the integrity of their formulations and quality and just add to the improvement of the brand and improve their marketing. But who knows what is to come of that? I have no clue. It's, it'll all just be a waiting game. But you know what? I'm happy that somebody bought it though and that they didn't go under and disappear completely. So we'll see, fingers crossed. I know a lot of people, and I'm, I'm sure they're watching and taking this feedback, are hoping that Revolution will maybe adopt the BH formula and that BH will keep the integrity of their formula. So hopefully, fingers crossed, what do you guys think? I'm happy that somebody bought it. That's it. <laughs> so hopefully, not too much changes but only for the better, you know? Some other news that I saw, and this is not amazing news. I'm gonna take some of Too Coal for You, which is a dark gray shimmery shade. And because I'm doing a halo eye, I'm just gonna put it on the inner and outer corner right on top of the gray on the eyelid. I'm not gonna go quite as high. But some other news that I saw, and this isn't that surprising to me, but e.l.f. is upping their pricing by a dollar on most items. There are some that are gonna stay the same, and I think it's really neat that they chose to even mention it, and they gave the reasons why, and I, I'm not surprised. I mean, e.l.f. has very affordable prices, and yes, everything is more expensive nowadays. With the supply chain, I can only imagine how hard it is on these makeup brands. So for me, it's completely understandable, and I love that they gave like two weeks notice, so if you did need to buy some other stuff, you could buy it a little bit cheaper. I mean, over the years in general, e.l.f. has raised their prices. I was into e.l.f. when everything was literally $1, and then they introduced their studio line, which was $3, and for me, I was a kid at that time, so that, for me, was a really great price. I'm taking some of friction here on my finger. Over the years, e.l.f. has definitely increased 
their prices. And there are brands that will increase their prices without mentioning anything. So all respect to Elf for even mentioning it. I think that deserves a little bit of an applause and everything is expensive for everybody, including these brands producing products. I'm taking the matte black that's in here and I'm defining the inner and outer corner and just blending and making everything more smoky, by the way. Like, you know, Pat McGrath, she made her products more expensive and didn't mention anything. So, I mean, e.l.f. is just doing it right. I think for a while, a couple years ago, they were sort of falling off and Wet n Wild was the affordable makeup brand. But now e.l.f. made a huge comeback and they're coming out with really great products. They're one of my favorite affordable brands. So, yeah, not really phased by that. They're so cheap to begin with that it's okay. And a dollar additional price, I personally can deal. There is a pressed silver glitter in here. I know some of you guys don't like pressed glitters, but I'm risking it. I normally don't, but I just want it to be extra baba boom with this look today, which is super duper smoky. Oh, I forgot to put the light shade down here. Let me do that. But yeah, I really like this palette. Okay. I think the quality is really awesome. The silvers in particular, super duper pigmented and high quality feeling. So, okay. I feel comfortable ranking this pretty high because it's really nice. And then the last piece of news that I wanted to talk about was Makeup Geek closing her makeup brand. I watched the video. Am I shocked? Not really. I kind of saw this coming. They haven't really been launching products. Nobody really talks about their products. I think Marlena has left a bad taste in some people's mouths, which I totally understand. I mean, I'm not here to talk about the person at all. The brand itself hasn't been very exciting. Not a new favorite, but since I'm also testing the new Hindash Mono Chromance collection, I pulled this guy out from Hindash's collection. It's his Harrow line. It's a eyeliner. It's a really beautiful eyeliner. So I've been enjoying this. At first I wasn't sure about this, but now I really, really enjoy it. So as I put on this eyeliner, now I've never tried Makeup Geek makeup, which I find unbelievable because it was so popular when I was watching YouTube and I always wanted to try Makeup Geek. I didn't have my own money when Makeup Geek was really popping or I didn't have that much at least. So Makeup Geek was never a brand that I spent my money on and it came to Target a couple years ago and I remember, maybe not a couple years ago, maybe sooner than that, but I remember being super tempted to finally try Makeup Geek still never got around to it and now it's too late <laughs> there's no point in trying now so i cannot really speak on the quality itself i've never been a fan or a user of makeup geek but it is a brand that i've followed to say the least you know makeup geek marlena i think she was one of the very first makeup videos i'd ever watched on youtube which is a big deal to me because look at what i do now but i was looking up how to apply eyeliner Liner to the waterline. <laughs> I was like 13 and she actually had a video about tight lining and water lining. So, and then that opens me up into a whole new world of makeup, you guys. So it's very interesting to see the evolution because I think Makeup Geek kind of paved the way for influencer brands. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Makeup Geek was first. And in the beginning, she had marketing right of giving all of the products out to PR, but I feel like that slowed down. I feel like the brand really didn't evolve to what is necessary in the current market in this industry. Yeah, I mean, I know the products are supposed to be amazing. I definitely don't doubt that, but I think the marketing and just with it being a smaller brand and having difficulty producing product became an issue and people lost interest. I don't think she was giving out enough PR and in a PR to the right people. So people just weren't talking about the brand, which makes it harder to produce products. Now I'm not behind the brand. I don't know what happened, but I can just tell you from the lack that I've been hearing from Makeup Geek, I'm not surprised. And when I did hear about Makeup Geek, it normally wasn't positive because it was about Marlena, kinda. Again, I don't really wanna talk about her as a person, but very drama centric person in the community because I think she, you know, she felt she had a say because let's be honest, she was like one of the very, very first OG beauty gurus. And sometimes I just don't think it was 
the right thing to do. Anyways, a favorite of mine that is old that I wanted to share with you guys, the Rare Beauty Mascara. I've been loving as it has had time to dry a little bit. It makes my lower lashes explode. Seriously, what an amazing mascara. I'm gonna stop talking and pop this on. So I'll be right back. Ardell sent me their Eco Lash Collection and I'm trying the 455 lashes. <gasps> They're so pretty, but let's talk about lips. So hands down, my favorite lip products that I tried this month were the uh, Natasha Denona I Need a Rose Lip Collection. She came out with three monochrome chromatic kind of trios of different rose shades one lip liner one lipstick and one lip gloss and i absolutely love this collection the only formula that i'm not in love with are the lip glosses but they're great to top off the lipstick and i have them just because but for me where the treasures are are the lip liners and the lipsticks i love those formulas from natasha denona so i love that i have not had to think about mixing certain in lip shades because I just do the name. So today, let's do the peachier one, which is going to be Pala. I think it will go best with, actually, let's do more pinky. I just lied to you. I'm gonna do more of the neutral pink, which is Daphne. So let me start off with the lip liner, and this has a hint of peach in here anyways, too. But do you see how easily this is gliding across the lip? And these colors are super wearable. You can wear them with so many different makeup looks. And you definitely don't need every single color in this line. I would say pick a color, whether it be Daphne, Kala, or Peony. Pick up at least a duo of the lip liner and the lipstick and you will be in love. Okay, and here's my Daphne lipstick. Then let me use my Daphne gloss. So the gloss just doesn't have enough shine for me. I have other formulas that I prefer, but since it's here, let's put it on. But any color from this lip line, I think you guys will love. For me, Daphne's my favorite everyday pink, so that's the one that I recommend. But this whole collection has been amazing. When I was, you know, traveling and moving and whatnot, all the lip products I kept were these Natasha Denona ones because I never had to think about it. They go with everything and then they also are curated for you. I also really did enjoy the Fenty Icon lipstick though, particularly in the shade MVP, which is the red. But I think the system itself is ridiculous in that you have to pay $12 for the actual lipstick case because I think that that's expensive <laughs> because this is what you get just get this okay I have the case it's just unnecessary it's a cool case it's luxurious whatever but I personally for me find it to be a waste of $12 but the formula from Fenty is really really solid and nobody does a red as good as Fenty, so MVP is just amazing, but I don't like how they marketed this one. I'm just gonna pull all my hair back because I left, you know, those little tendrils that I clipped back, but they are so frizzy right now. <laughs> So let's just do this. Anyway, you guys, here is the final look using products that I've been loving these last few weeks. A lot of these items are still items that I'm going to continue to play with. Got lipstick on my teeth. Just because I haven't had the time, so make sure you stay tuned for next month's official favorites video. It was just fun to sit down, play with new makeup, and then also talk about makeup news that I haven't gotten to talk about lately. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.